Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of the e-bike series. Since last time I've made a few extra modifications to the bike, such as adding a chain, connecting up the hall sensors as well as turning the Arduino into a cycle analyst. So let's go and have a closer look. So for most of this video I'm going to try doing things a little bit differently and I'm going to try doing the video this style, which I've never done before. So anyway, this of course is the bike here that you saw in the last video. Now it looks a bit different, uh, partly because I've removed the battery cover because I'm working on something for part 3, uh, which I'll explain at the end, but also you can see the first difference, the chain. So this is the sprocket, um, which I mounted to obviously the motor, I took it off an old bike um, and just see it just screwed on like a normal uh, freewheel. Um, and then this is the derailleur I took off this bike when it came with. In fact, it's actually a used one that I bought off eBay because the old one got kind of all busted up and it was horrible. So got a new, in quote marks, derailleur and then this, the chain going round. Um, it's got a front derailleur, but I need to sort that out because it's not quite screwed on properly so it can kind of wobble around at the moment. So that's this end sorted. And then the cables just run up to these kind of very basic shifters that sort of work but not really so but that's the best I've got for now for anyway. Um, moving on to the next bit we have the sensors which are these wires here um, and these run into the VESC into that port there. Now this white wire which isn't connected to anything um, is actually just a temperature sensing cable uh, and, that, and this motor doesn't have those capabilities so I'm not able to use that wire. Um, so I had to cut the wire, uh, the connector off the motor in order to splice these two cables together and I just put a bit of heat shrink over it to make it all neat and tidy. Um, the main benefit of having sensors on a bike like this um, is basically it gives you an easier start when you're um, going from standstill. Uh, if you don't have sensors you'll definitely notice it kind of stuttering um, a lot when you try and start, um, it will be very jerky um, and occasionally it will just kind of stall and you won't be able to get anywhere. So sensors really help with that. However, at uh, higher speeds, sensors can be a bit of a hindrance because um, it slows down kind of the whole working of the bike because it's got to check the sensors and then apply um, the voltage and everything to the motor. So what the VESC does, which is rather clever, which is obviously this uh, black thing here, um, is that the VESC has what's called a hybrid mode, which is when you're in lower speeds, it uses sensors to get you off to a good start. However, once you get over a certain speed, I think I've said it was something like 2000 ERPM, which is um, engine RPM, um, which is, you know, look it up if you want to know more about it, it's a bit complicated to explain, which seeing that's about 10 miles an hour in my case, maybe even less. Um, so up to that speed, it will use the sensors, and then above that speed, it cuts off the sensors and uses it in sensorless mode um, so it gives you the best of both worlds basically so you get a smooth start but then you also get good performance at the higher end of the speed range. So to demonstrate this a bit more practically I have the bike in sensorless mode so the sensors aren't doing anything and if I try and go from a standstill it works but the bike struggles to get off. Uh, you can also notice the tone of the bike and remember that for a little bit before I change it to censored. So this is now with the bike in hybrid mode. So the sensors are working at low speeds but just not at high speeds. And it's hard to show on camera but if I just twist the throttle it starts off a lot easier compared to the sensorless one. And the tone is also different. Now apart from the sensors the biggest difference on this bike is this new module here. Which as you can see says e-bike analyst. Um, now what this is, is this contains the Arduino that you saw in the previous uh, video, um, however it adds this display to it. Um, now what this display does is it gives you all sorts of information uh, such as your speed, how much battery you've got left, how far you've ridden and also the current going to the motor which is pretty handy, um, especially the battery one because you know when you're going to run out, you don't have to rely on range or kind of just guessing when it's going to run out. Um, the speed uh, and distance work well and they took a bit of time to calibrate um, but now they're working fine. Um, the speed reads in miles an hour so it just took a bit of math um, to get it from the reading that the VESC gets. This uh, motor has multiple different poles 
um, which is essentially kind of segments of the motor. Um, again, I'm not the best person to explain it, but if you want to know more about it, look up motor poles online. Um, so essentially converting the reading that the vet gets um, into miles an hour. Um, then the same was for kilometers, basically you just had to do speed times time in order to get the distance. So again, just some simple math there. The current, it's quite useful um, because this throttle uses um, is changing constant current um, to the vet, that's the mode it's running. Um, it can be handy just to know what kind of power you're running at and how much current you're drawing and kind of get an idea of how much battery life you're going to have. On the note of the throttle, the throttle also connects into the Arduino here um, and then there's this big cable oh, which is just a sort of cut up ethernet cable and that runs down here into this port of the vest uh, and that carries voltage as well as a UART connection um, which is how the Arduino communicates with the vest. Um, so this is all controlled by UART, um, so is the display. So if you couldn't tell by the format of this video, this is just kind of an update on what I've managed to do on the bike so far. Um, there's a few more things that I need to do, such as sort the suspension out, because uh, it's pretty rusty. Um, it only gives you about that much travel, what's that, 20 millimeters or something, which is pretty useless for going over bumps. However, the big thing that's coming up in the next segment is I'm gonna be adding um, some custom made boxes on here and here to hold the electronics uh, which is taking me quite a while, it's taking me about four weeks to make them however in the next video um, I'll be installing them and putting on batteries in them and on the note of batteries I also hope to be getting some more batteries soon to double the range, uh, at the moment it goes about eight miles on a single charge which is not bad uh, but I'd like that to be a bit more so I'm going to try and get two extra to make this go up to 16 miles on a single charge so I know it's been short and sweet, but those are the things that I've added to the bike most recently. Um, if you'd like to see any of them in more detail, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to make a separate video on them. Anyway, for now, stay tuned for part three and I'll see you in my next video.